I knew there'd be a lot of action in the movie. And I knew that uh, we were gonna see Superman fight. It's a must for any type of action film like, like this, to have your physical training as well as the stunt training, because they're each gonna complement each other. We're gonna go through this process because we know it's not only important to the physical aesthetic and how they look, but it's important for their character development. Like all of our films, there's a great deal of physicality. And we've always believed in not just preparing the body, but it's also a state of mind. It has to embody everything you do. So we worked again with Mark Twight from Jim Jones, who we worked with on 300. I love, you know, the sort of Jim Jonesian approach, and I, and I love Mark's approach to the actors and their characters and the physicality. It's like a triad all combined, and, and the training, in a weird way, is a meditation on those things. The wonderful thing about a superhero is all you gotta do to look at the physique you need to produce is open a comic book. And there it is. To live up to that iconic ideal was not an easy task. Mark's fantastic. He, he understands the diet of it and the mindset of it. He was tasked with bringing Henry from human status to superhuman status. Henry was game from the get-go. For Henry's journey on this job, I, I, I met him for the first time and basically asked questions. I tried to get a, you know, a handle on his character. A little bit of his training background, his sort of lifestyle background. That allowed me over the next couple of weeks to write a training plan that he followed for the entire duration that we expected. Mark probably one of the most incredible people I've met. The things he has helped me achieve, I can only speak for myself, really, um, but he's, he's opened my eyes to seeing past what I thought were my limits and the ability to crush me in the gym, but just enough that I can't walk out properly and I feel horrible and feel a little sick, but I still want to come back. It's not easy for anyone, but that doesn't mean that it was painful. Obviously, there are times where he was cursing me under his breath, sometimes to my face, but um, it's expected. Having it be difficult, I think, makes the end result worthwhile. Henry's work to get his body in shape also just evolved into getting his, uh, say, his mind and spirit into shape. One of the strongest connections that I saw, not only with our gym, but with Henry and the idea of Superman, was that uh, he's given this great power by birth, and with that comes this sort of responsibility to, you know, to develop values, to live by a code, and Henry's journey was quite similar in a way. 100%, the training has been a journey of discovery, just like Superman's journey of discovery. Superman learned he could fly. I learned I could do all sorts of things in the gym which I never thought were possible. He started out, I think his deadlift was about 245 pounds. After a period of time, he pulled 435. And it all came from hard work and discipline and paying attention to his diet and to his sleep and to his recovery. And ultimately, I think Henry Cavill is Superman. Mark Twight has worked with all of the Kryptonians. The Kryptonians are a very physical and physically fit race and we needed to make sure that whether it was General Zod or his number one sub-commander, Fiora, that they were all really pretty amazing specimens. A lot of the first week I spent with Mark, we, we talked more than anything else, you know. Their philosophy about why they do what they do and, and why it's important is much more convincing than um, anything I've heard anywhere else. He started to get it and he was like, wow, this is cool. Now I get it, it's time to get serious. I mean, he would just kill himself and then rest long enough to decide that it was okay, that he really wanted to go again. You know, people, uh, they like to talk about it in terms of how it's going to be uh, extreme or torturous or whatever, but I never really found it to be their approach. I never felt like they asked me to do anything I couldn't do. With Antia, she wasn't fit from our point of view when she arrived, but she had taken care of herself and she came from a sport background, having done gymnastics when she was younger, so she moved well, she knew how to use her body, and that gave her quite a bit of advance in terms of teachability. Two hours with Jim Jones is basically work hard and confront yourself. Everything you do in these two hours needs absolute 100% of your focus. So the gym, you know, there are no televisions, there are no newspapers or whatever distracts you. You find yourself in the front of a bar with 215 pounds, and of course you're naturally 
scared, like, you know, injuring yourself or failing or whatever. But I also wanted to feel Fiora's powers, right? And not just imagine them. So I knew, okay, I should go for it. She became this person. She became who she wanted to become. And she noticed the effects of working hard in the gym, day after day, working very hard with stunts and her character development and dieting very, very hard. Eventually, you come to a point where your mind allows you to break through your physical boundaries and takes you to places where you think you could never go to. And when that happens, it's a great feeling, I have to say, it's almost addictive. For me, functional training means transferable. That means that the training I do in the gym improves my ability to do the actual tasks. For Henry, you know, learning to move his body, not only in the gym, but also in the stunt training, was what gave him the capability to do that. Even though you never really see my actual body in the movie, I'm playing someone who is very physically capable. Obviously, it affects the way you move and just your physical presence. Mike Shannon, he takes acting very seriously, and it shows in his character that he's constantly thinking about it, and to bring that into the actual fighting and the conflict that he has in a way that's not just character-driven or emotion-driven, but also has a physical component to it. We had hands in kind of how they develop their character. The discussions during warm-ups and cool-downs was how to express a character, in Henry's case, that silent strength comes out very well. In Michael Shannon's case, it was how a general acts. You see his posture change and mentioning to him about how a general would act. If they have to express power uh, through their attitude and their shoulder and their posture, it's usually, you know, very, very subtle. Auntie in the same way, one day she came in before shooting and I believe she had to throw somebody through a ceiling. To see her pick something up off the ground heavy and then go shoot the scene, uh, those things definitely have to do with the character. Working out and lifting weights made me experience that there's beauty to physical strength and, and, and fearlessness and power. And it actually became a very important pillar to approach, to play a, a female superhuman character. But because they were all doing it together, and because they knew what the pain was like, it was this kind of camaraderie. You put an actor in the situation where, hey, if you live up to this role, if you are believable in this role, you're gonna be the guy. You're gonna be the next guy. He keeps it constantly evolving as not just a physical thing, but a psychological thing as well. He's just someone who understands what I'm going through physically, which I think is what makes him such a good trainer. He sees your breaking point about to happen, then he'll either push you past that breaking point, or he'll push you right up to the edge of that precipice and then hold you back. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall watching him work because he's a, a remarkable man, truly. And I have so much respect for him. It's a cool way to make a movie. You know, it's a cool way to get someone to do something that they'd never done. And I think that that's what Mark loves to get at and kind of mess with. To take these people who've chosen to be actors who experience emotion in a way where they're analyzing it as they do it. I think for him, those guys in the gym are really interesting because pain and fear success and joy, all those things are present. It's there. With an actor, the reward of the suffering is really evident. And you bring that to the movie, it's, it's fun. It's not the kind of training which just makes you look pretty. It's the kind of training which, first and foremost, is useful. I didn't realize like how difficult the stuff that I was doing was. But because I train with Jim Jones, I've been given that, at the very least, core strength any type of action, any type of stunt work, specifically wire work, you need a strong core and you need your muscles to be lengthened, you need them to be strong and you need to be stable. If you don't have any structure, any muscle tone to hold that together, you can get injured. So being in shape is an enormous advantage. In terms of the action, that was something Zach said, I want some really great action. He has these powers and what would it be like when he's fighting another Kryptonian who have the same kind of powers? Flying was one of many attributes that we had to really, really take our time to figure out how do we do this correctly. We went from wire rigs to gimbal rigs where we had more of a base plate. You name it, we explored it. Thanks to DJ, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of takeover with, with CG, but we still do what's called a performance capture where we fly our guys on wires and DJ uses that base movement and builds over it to give it that human connection. In this film, you're gonna see Superman flying faster than he's ever flown before. 
It's hard to come up with those speeds. Zach and I would sit down and come up with a scale. So we have some sort of rules, a playbook, right? Some guidelines, foundation to go, okay, let's try and not violate these. I mean, you guys like a ride. Right? Exactly. I mean, it's more about pressure than it is about pain. Yeah, pain, exactly. yeah. So basically, we take that as a reference and then we build all the physics around the action to see if it makes sense or not. Most movies will have three big elements that you have to achieve throughout the course of the movie. And this one has you know, 11, 12 giant sequences. I thought it was just completely impossible to make, but that it was going to be great if we could pull it off. I think the way that the fights are different in this movie is the super speed aspect, making it completely superhuman and beyond the scope of what is actually humanly possible. And I think that's what makes these particularly exciting because anything can happen and what the imagination allows does happen in this. There's the handoff between visual effects and then picking the moments when you can put them in a real environment, have real stuff happen that we can do practically. For instance, the oil rig. You see him more as a human in that element because he hasn't got the Superman outfit on yet. He's just a guy, but he's this guy who happens to be able to walk through fire and have nothing happen to him. Henry is very good at physical things. Having an actor that has natural talent uh, to perform action is, is always uh, a bonus. Go! Our challenge is always to make the actor do the most of his physical abilities, of course, without asking them to do anything too crazy. The most you see the actor performing their own stunts and action, the more rewarding it is for us. It's an incredibly good collection of, of stunt people on this film. There's a certain level of commitment that something like this takes, and that goes all the way through. Russell was great because he had a physical ability before, so he knew what he was good at, so he had a little more input in the style and the performance. He brought a lot to the table with experience in action. In the Genesis chamber, he's swimming through a tunnel. It's supposed to be this very watery, amniotic fluid environment, and how else do you do that but submerge somebody? You know, we talked for a while about should we hang them from wires and blow some wind through them and shoot them high speed, but the style of the movie's handheld, it's kind of real, so we wanted the real physics of what that would be. You have to submerge yourself 15 feet and then kick off from a certain point and then travel 60, 70 feet underwater, sometimes going through specific motions and then return up to the top. It's a big breath required, you know? It was super crowded down there. You got camera guys, you got focus pullers. We had underwater electricians, underwater grips, because this tank was rigged like I've never seen a tank rigged before. And the amount of lights, and I think at our disposal here, we have close to 700,000 watts of light. And, and then you got people down below need to be mindful of their bubbles, so they have to hold their breath when cameras are rolling. It's not very pleasant. Pete and myself did a lot of head scratching about how we could get this shot. And seemingly, it seems quite simple. He just needs to be floating there, motionless in the water, but we had flames above the surface of the water. You never want to tie anybody underwater when you're going to remove the regulator from them. Henry would naturally float feet down, and then he would sink. So we had to have lines from his feet up to just below the surface, in fact, because we couldn't go above the surface because flames were going to go above the surface. So we had to go as high as we could, but tie below the surface. And then he had just loops around his fingers so he could still have this Jesus pose. And then I just have to leave him with all the guys, again, holding their breath because they're shooting up and the bubbles can't be in it. Now, the danger, of course, in that is if, um, it's if Henry went to the surface as the propane blast went off. You just sink down and you're holding your breath and you're doing whatever you need to do for the camera, which you can't see. And I had this wonderful moment of just taking a few deep, slow breaths and then dropping down. And all of a sudden, all I could hear was my heart. And it was peaceful and quiet. And I was down there for ages. And I just felt like I could just keep on holding my breath. Everything slowed down. And as a contrast, all the work we're doing and, and how rushed everything is here and how sort of frenetic the energy is, it was nice to just have that peaceful moment. And I never expected that to happen. It's something I will not forget. It's probably one of the lasting memories from this job, that moment of peace, which I found just underwater. Anytime we're working with an actor or a stunt person, 
everyone brings their own God-given talent and attributes to, to a particular project. When Zach and I are creating the styles in the laboratory before we get to actually even sometimes hire the actors, we have a, an understanding of how we want each person to move stylistically. On Krypton, they're a military culture. So we looked at that and go, okay, what, do we, what sort of basis do we want to give? And we mix some uh, Chinese methods, Filipino methods, a little bit of basic boxing, but we, we kind of tried to create this little hybrid that hadn't really been seen before. Not radically different than other styles we've created before, but just to give it a little flavor of its own. You first have to see what they're good at and then make the decision, okay, do I want to try to push them to a level that, say, might not be natural or go with what they're good at? So Ancha had good lines, really good fluidity, so we kind of made her style uh, a female version of what the Kryptonian form of martial arts was. And for the fight geeks out there, they're gonna notice that the guys from Krypton all do similar movements. Feora has a move like a, a palm slap, which on Krypton would be like a you know, right hook or something, but on Earth, I mean, it would disintegrate a human body. So she throws that slap with, you know, Power and Zod will do the same thing, but they're, they both have different styles. Michael Shannon was really good with straight movement, so we kind of made his moves were a little more straight blasts and more direct stuff. So we had to come up with a movement form for each of them that, that kind of uh, uh, fit their, their storyline. Henry could pretty much do anything you showed him. His character, Superman, he doesn't know this Kryptonian martial arts forms. So he almost had to uh, take Henry's crispness and clean lines uh, and training out of it to give him the frat boy haymaker, if you will. So that was kind of fun, just telling him to open his moves up, big strikes and heavy blows, because he's a super uh, power base. Zod had more of a strategic style to him, so it makes for a good fight. We knew this was a broader challenge, conceptually, because Superman can't do anything that's not a visual effect. He can't just grab a thing and move it without it being a visual effect. He doesn't move it at our scale. Zack likes to draw his own board, so we take that, we design the action around it, and then we shoot our rehearsals in a cinematic way. We build the whole sequence as you're gonna potentially see it on the screen. We know the running times and we know if the timing of the action is going to work out in the end or not. We do stunt viz to figure out all the beats, create the action, get everyone on the same page so we have a much clearer vision when we actually get uh, on set to shoot it. They show us the entire fight scene. They say, this is what it's supposed to look like, obviously in a very, very basic version. And this is the one piece we're doing here. And that did make it a lot easier. Otherwise, we'd be a little bit lost, I think, because when you're in the green room, doing a whole bunch of punches. You're thinking, am I at the side of a building? Am I upside down? Am I in space? Am I, am I flying through a building? The previous helps with that. I love it. It lets me know the world that I'm walking into, and it lets me know how they see these action sequences from an emotional point of view. It lets me know the moments they're looking to capture. A lot of Illinois was dominated by the uh, Battle of Smallville which is a big military operation in a small town. So a lot of complexities involved with that. A lot of action, a lot of stunts, live fire, helicopters, the whole shebang. I mean, it's a, it's a monster. I don't think I've ever seen an action scene that's this big. And we shot it in two weeks. So that was probably the hardest scene to come up with just because of the sheer size of it. When we did the Battle of Smallville, we used part of what existed and then we built our own buildings and destroyed them. And we put pieces of airplane parts and we lit these enormous fires and we did it more practical than we've ever done things before. When it dips and the guns start firing, it's gonna it's gonna start coming forward. Yes, it is. Damn it! I know. But couldn't we get those helicopters that don't do job that? that? You can do that. You know. Damn physics. We probably shot 95 percent of it on the actual streets. A couple beats we shot on green screen, but the majority of that was live action on location. As much as we could do practically is is always better. Henry's been fantastic. Total trooper inherently trusts the stunt department. We always show him video beforehand. 
say this is what's going to happen with one of us in that situation so he knows what's going to happen he knows that we've already done it that we've got his best interests at heart <laughs> That's when we started coming up with how fast Superman flies. They really had to plan out every move and what was going to be shot practically and what we were going to be doing digitally. Damon and I sat down and said, oh yeah, we'll be able to photograph these pieces, but there's these other pieces that we can't photograph. So we either had to use wires, or a lot of times we've done this physical to CG handoff. Where we'll start out and it's actually really Henry and then all of a sudden when he goes into the air or if he makes a really fast move, we turn him into CG and then we put him back to the real Henry again. Are you okay? We want to keep as much real as possible, period. You know, we want to see the nuances of the face and when the hair blow by and, you know, the cape. And we want to be in there. We want to be in there. We want to be over the action. We want to constantly push back the digital handoff. And as long as we can push that and keep that real, then visual effects is not taking over. Visual effects is assisting what we're trying to do. And we're trying to keep it as real as possible to the last possible moment. We want to be able to have these guys really do some of the moves so that when we get to the pauses in the fight or the moments where your eye is going to dwell on them, it's really them. The other authentic thing that Zach wanted and really paid off was that all the soldiers in the scenes are real soldiers and airmen. They're not central casting extras. I think every one of them had deployed at least once or twice to either Iraq or Afghanistan. They knew how to put on the equipment, they knew how to hold the guns, and they knew how to be authentic because they were the real deal. Zach, the director, is is awesome, outstanding. He respects the military. He gets out there and talks to each one of the soldiers or the airmen, and it's great. Roger, son, Roger, let's go! I'm going to make them suffer, Cal. These humans you've adopted, I will take them all from you one by one. One of the big fights that we did takes place in Metropolis. Zach said, you know, I envision this to be a barroom brawl on a larger scale, as opposed to picking up a beer bottle and whacking the guy over the head, maybe picks up an eye beam. To shoot a stunt viz for that was challenging. We basically had some wire moves, some walking and talking blocking, mixed together with more visual effects pre viz for that, due to basically the battle being all in the air. They're busting up through buildings doing moves in the air, dodging each other, flipping each other, but never landing on the ground, just continually rolling around and creating this intense, aggressive fight. The hummingbird fight got its name because that's sort of the hummingbird thing, right? You're able to come up here, then go over here. They're able to stay in one spot and hover, and then they can switch positions real fast. So we wanted to come up with this fight um, that they're all going around each other. Now it's easy to come up with it in our heads, but how are we going to make that practical? I can only do so much flying guys around at the speed and the agility in which these two characters do. We couldn't move a human that fast and not rip them apart or <laughs> blow something. I've never really participated in something like that before, trying to build one of these you know, epic fights that people talk about for years to come. I'm not the type of actor that goes to the monitor usually. Particularly if I'm doing a scene, I would never go to the monitor. I don't want to see it. But in this kind of work, when you're just trying to get uh, each little movement correct, I'm actually very critical of it. Inevitably, it never looks the way that it felt. You can do something and it feels very full on, and then you go look at it and it seems kind of flat. And you realize that there's a lot of technique at play. It's just about angles and how your body moves. Great, let's go tighter, very nice. And that's what Zach and Damon especially do very, very well. It's like these two gods basically fighting over the city, <laughs> causing destruction, but mainly taking each other out. You know, that's what you want to get. That's your payoff at the end as a fan. It's been great fun working with the guys, doing the wire work for hours on end. There's a lot to be said for it because you get to fly, <laughs> and that is fun.
when you're doing something which is physically taxing and all round tricky to do because it's so new, it makes it that much easier when you've got guys who are actually enjoying it with you and, and having a laugh and having fun and working exceptionally hard to get it right too. You might want to step back a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. We're still waiting for the easy part of the movie to show up and it hasn't shown up yet, so. Staying with the DC theme, have you ever noticed Superman's surprising lack of dialogue in Man of Steel? Many fans are happy with how Superman was portrayed in what was ultimately a very dark and serious take on the character. However, a bigger issue may be the lack of character development for the titular hero, because he had a paltry 43 lines of dialogue in the movie. What's your favourite DC movie? Let me know below.